On the 14th of March 2017, Parliament had a debate on the recent increase in farm attacks. Honourable Members, the next item on the order paper is a debate on an urgent matter of national importance on the recent increase in farm murders and farm attacks in South Africa. During this debate, MPs described scenes of horrific, gruesome murder. I was wondering if our justice system was doing enough to prosecute the perpetrators of these crimes. I say that it is not normal criminality if you look at the Lindley farmers where Volming, a two-year-old toddler, a father and a mother were brutally murdered. When asked by State Prosecutor Yanni Boerta on his impressions of Potgieter's body, then Book, the coroner, said the deceased had been tortured to death. Seven months later, the High Court in Bloemfontein gave two perpetrators three life sentences each for the death of this family. I say it is not normal criminality if you look, for instance, at the Swanapool family in KwaZulu-Natal, or no, this was in Bluefontein, where the investigating officer, Kobus Kutsia, told the court that the couple were tied to a single bed and tortured for hours. The men took turns to rape Rini while her husband was forced to watch. 21 months later, the three suspects were found guilty of murder. I say it is not normal criminality. If you look, for instance, at the Skitter family at Richmond, KwaZulu-Natal, it says Mrs. Skitter's head was crushed with a heavy object and all three victims were set on fire. Four months after the attack, the perpetrators were sentenced to life imprisonment. I hold the view that society needs to be protected from all three of you. And if, if one has regard to the brutal and calculated way that you went about your business, murdering three defenseless people, I have no choice but to find that you are a danger to society. I say it is not normal criminality if you look at Dan Knight, also from Karanzulu Natal, where it says that his partner Beth Buchner were attacked in their home by a gang of five men. Knight was beaten to death with hammers while Buchner was forced to watch. Thirteen months after the attack, the two perpetrators were sentenced to life imprisonment. I say it is not normal criminality if you look at the recent case of Nikki with Simpson when the perpetrators used a plastic bag where, for instance, they cut up arms, uh, broke her ribs, her uh, knee, and even used an electric drill to drill holes in her feet. It is now seven months later and no arrests have been made. All of these examples given by the Far Right Freedom Front Plus are true and indeed very gruesome. It is good to note that in most of these cases the perpetrators have been convicted. Let's have a look at a few examples given by the Far Left EFF. In January 2016, Sean Tangasha, who was 29 years old, and Samuel Kreka, who was 35 years old and working as casual laborers in farming parades, were killed by a group of white farmers. 22 months later, six men are still on trial for these murders. Again, in October 2016, two white farmers, Willem Ostenzen and Theo Jackson, appeared in court for forcing a black person, victim lodger, into a coffin. Twelve months after this crime was committed, the perpetrators were convicted and received stiff sentences. 
Accused number one, you are effectively sentenced to 11 years direct imprisonment. Accused number two, you are effectively sentenced to 14 years direct imprisonment. These sentences seem extremely harsh, where the victim wasn't harmed at all. The convicted is expected to approach the Supreme Court of Appeal to challenge the sentences. In January this year, Mark Scott Crossley was arrested in Pretoria. Last year, Scott Crossley attacked a wildlife center worker and smashed his cell phone before running him over twice with a vehicle. The employee Silence Mabunda was hospitalized after this incident. In, 20, in, 2000, in 2004, Scott Crossley was convicted of masterminding the premeditated murder of farm worker by throwing him to lions. He was sentenced to life, but this was commuted to five years sentence after the Supreme Court of Appeal. To me, this is an example where the justice system has clearly failed. A man fed his victim to lions, only to be later released and then returned to commit more heinous crimes. It seems that the South African justice system is doing its part to protect the citizens of the country. In some cases the sentences were too light and the perpetrators came back to commit more crimes. In other cases sentences seem a little bit too harsh. Luckily there is the root of the Supreme Court of Appeals. What do you think about our justice system? Boom, I'm not a guy,